Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today what we're going to be looking at is that car tutorial that I made a while ago. It was outdated so I thought I would update it and we'll be covering a little bit of new features as well with this particular tutorial. So definitely tune in after the intro. So we actually got a couple different models for this particular truck. We got uh, this one here, and then there is uh, a few other ones that um, have different inventories and stuff like that. So we have this one, which is the double inventory. It has a couple indicators at the back that there's a couple crates. And if we place down a new truck, then you can see that there is no crates at all. And if we right click on the truck, then it will update to have one crate. And if we put items into the crate and then upgrade again, then it will kick the items out and um, we can pick those up. And the reason for that is if the entity despawns, it would also take the items. So I made sure to include script that would basically kick out the items before it despawned and updated the model. So that's basically how that works. Uh, the truck is also drivable, so you can drive it around. And I'll show you the um, actual uh, block bench thing so you guys can see how it all works as well. Uh, I did cover it in the last video, so it's not too much different when it comes down to modeling for the structures and, or the um, the, the models for the car as well so you, you can basically follow most of that tutorial for modeling and stuff now the one other thing that I did add was I added uh, braking properties so the car will start smoking once it's actually takes a little bit of damage and there's a few different particles over time so there's uh, some flaming particles and if we hit it again, there is uh, some smoking ones. And it actually indicates how much health the entity itself has left. So in this case, um, I think there is about 25 or less health. So we can actually use coal iron ignits to basically repair this car. All we need to do is uh, shift and right click on it. And the particles will start to update. As you can see, it's just smoking with the brown smoke now and we can repair it until it's fully healed again and then we can drive it in some more and stuff like that so that's basically some of the new features that are basically implemented not too complicated but still pretty cool all right so let's hop into amp creator and i'll show you how all these script is set up Now one thing to note is all the models and the block, bem block bench models as well as the textures for these particular models are all in the workspace or the example files and stuff like that. They will also include the workspace as well as the procedures after this uh, tutorial is finished. So uh, for the block bench models, I'll uh, quickly open up the truck model and we can see how it's all set up. That's pretty much the exact same thing. Now underneath is the grid where the player will be end up basically sitting. And that's right where the uh, cabin of the truck is. That's the only thing that needs to be made sure that it's actually properly done. There's another thing that you need to pay attention to is the North symbol. Um, a little hard to see, but there's a North symbol right here facing the front of the vehicle and that's important for the direction that you want to basically drive the truck or vehicle in. Now I've basically used a whole bunch of different shapes to create the vehicle itself. All these are different shapes that build up the components of the truck. Obviously less shapes will not only be better for the performance but it will also um, allow for easier texturing and stuff like that as well so sometimes less is more and there's actually quite a bit 
of little components that go into this uh, particular model, but it still looks pretty cool regardless. So again, uh, for the bone, I only have one bone and it, you don't really need to animate too much of the stuff, so I just put it under one uh, folder and put all the uh, components under that particular folder. So that's all there is in Blockbench. Uh, let's go into mCreator now. All right, so we have three different folders in this particular workspace. We have the one for procedures, the inventories, and then we also have the entities themselves. So there are three different types of entities. We have the regular truck that we basically spawn down. We have the one with one crate, and then we have the second one with the uh, two crates. So for the settings for them, I have basically set up the required uh, dependencies and stuff. So we have also a few different uh, mob files. Now these mob files need to be the same name as the mod model files. So in our case, we have truck, truck underscore chest one, underscore, pardon me, underscore one. And then we have truck underscore chest underscore two. So if we go to our textures, we'll have them as the exact same names. And then we also have a overlay texture, which I'm doing the lights with to kind of give that a glow at night. So that's these uh, four textures right here. And then these are for the inventory. Now to import those, you just need to go to import textures and then scroll down to um, import mob GUI, logo, etc. textures, and then you can also press Control Shift 7 and that will import other model textures. Alright, so after you've done that, make sure to go to your 3D models and import Java models. Now, another question that I commonly get when actually referring to models and stuff like that, a lot of people actually build the models on blocks. So if we go into block bench, it'll give you a selection of options to actually uh, choose from for your type of model. Many people use Java block slash item or one of the other ones. It's actually very important when you're designing your model to make sure that you have the proper one selected. Now there's Java slash block. This is for items and blocks for the Java version. There's also a modded entity, which is the one that you need for your entity files and projectiles. So make sure to use this one right here when you're actually creating your models. Block bench models isn't really required. I have had issues with it. Don't use it for Forge, Optifine, and the other one I have never used. I've only used the modded entity for the Java files and the Java block slash item for the um, JSON file ones. Outside of that, that's all that you really need to know about uh, Blockbench. Okay, so let's go back to mCreator. We have imported our models, our textures, and we can now start working on importing the, or setting up the model, uh, our entities that we need for our our project. So I've basically just left the default name for it. I've selected the model for the truck and then I've selected the texture for that one and then I've set the overlay and then I've basically just adjusted the um, radius for the hitbox a little bit and then I've also um, offsetted the position for the player for where it sits. Now you might need to do that. It might take a little bit of testing to play around with it. It did for me with this particular model. Um, generally one value is one entire block. So uh, you can kind of get a rough estimate if you go back into your model in your block bench and kind of count how many pixels down you need to go to get a precise accurate um, distance for this value. You just basically divide um, that number by one by um, 16 and you should be able to get to that particular level. I've also set the spawn egg uh, color to the colors for the model, the more prominent ones, which is red and gray. 
and I've disabled any sounds. I don't really want it. I didn't want them. All right, so the other thing that I've basically done is I've set the model up for a creature, and this way the iron golems and other mobs won't attack it. I have set the health to 10. You can basically change this to any uh, number that you want. If you want it higher, you can do that. And then for the movement speed, I have set it to three. That way it can basically um, still get a lot of movement and it's fast enough where it's about the same as a wolf, then that's generally fine. All the other settings are basically um, fine to configure however you want. This controls the speed of how fast the vehicle basically goes. Uh, the other thing that I have is knockback resistance. I have set this to five, which is pretty high, but then again, we don't want it to go flying all over the place if it gets hit either. So I basically set it to five. The important part is making it writable and having the forward movement control, which is very important when actually making the uh, entity controllable. Uh, some other things that you might want to pay attention to are the different properties which it can be damaged by. I have it set up so it can't be damaged by uh, lightning, potions, or dragon breath. All the other things would be fine for a vehicle to be damaged by. Of the Most of them make sense. With her, maybe not so much. Outside of that, let's go to particles. No particles have been set up. Inventory, this particular one doesn't have an inventory. By default, it will have nine here. Set this to zero if you don't want an inventory for it. I make sure to not link a GUI. Uh, GUI to this particular truck. After that we have only one procedure which is the particles for the uh, smoke and fire which I'll cover in a little bit. Uh, AI tasks I have disabled everything there is no tasks here so you don't really need that for the cars unless you want them to like randomly drive around and stuff and that would be a little bit awkward but you could still do it if you wanted to. I've just basically left this blank so uh, they don't move at all. And then what I've done for spawning is I just uncheck these two boxes here and then we can just basically spawn them whenever we want through an item or through a spawn egg like I have with this particular tutorial. Alright, so that's basically the gist of the uh, textures and stuff like that. For the other ones, what I've done is just a little bit different. I've set up the models and the textures and the overlays and I've basically set the spawn egg to no particular spawn egg so it won't uh, actually go to a particular place and all the other settings are exactly the same as the other vehicle. There's also the particles for the one uh, for the health and stuff as well. So that's basically the three different um, different entities. Now we'll, we'll cover the GUI next. All right, so going into the GUI, uh, we have our first container truck, which is our model one, our second model, I guess. And what this has is just some text for the type of inventory it is and the inventory for the player and then it has nine slots which will be important when we actually set up the inventory and then there is the other inventory which has uh, 18 slots for the inventory so if we go back to our entities and we click on this one and go to inventory you can see that this number is set to nine and we have linked our GUI to this particular one the other inventory is set to 18, and we have linked that particular inventory as well. Outside of that, uh, let's head on over to the procedures. So if we go into the procedures, we have a couple different folders here. We have the global uh, procedures, which are global events. And then we also got the entity one, which I will cover right now. So this is basically the procedure for the particles. Now I've basically set it up so it's randomized where the spawn location is. You can basically set it up however you want. You can actually use this exact same script if you want to. 
in your own procedure. Uh, one thing to note is the position of it might be a little bit off compared to where your model is. So it might be worth uh, designing yours from scratch. So I will break down of what's going on here. So up here, uh, we have a couple different uh, properties for testing how much health the actual entity has. We're testing if the, or basically we're setting the maximum health for stage one equals maximum health of entity divided by four. So this will give us 25% of the health and it will basically tell us that part. Then what we're doing is we're basically multiplying or setting that variable again, but we're going to get the local variable and we're multiplying that by three. So this basically gets 75% of the health. And then stage two basically just divides the health by two. And then we're testing if it is 50% of the health left. And then stage three, what we're doing is we're testing for only 25%. So again, this actually tests, stage one actually tests for 75% uh, of the health, and then it will start uh, pushing out the particles. Then uh, we have all the different location particle uh, settings on this particular part here. Whoop. Uh, there is quite a bit of script going on, so I'll do my best to explain. Now there is your main procedure, which is testing for the direction of the entity. And then what I'm doing is running it on the client side only. So it's not gonna run on server side because particles need to run on the client side only. And then what I'm doing is I'm basically setting the location for the X, Y, and Z of the default setting for the particles. And then what I'm doing is setting a random number. And then what I'm doing is basically testing for a range for that random number. So if it's between 0 0.8 and less than equal to or less than one, then it's going to spawn this particle here for this location for X. And then it does Z and then your um, other Z, which is your negative. This is your positive. And then you have your um, negative x which is offsetted by 0 0.5 in distance so basically what this does is it overrides the default settings and resets the value to a different location based on the random number so after we've done that i've basically done this for every one of the um, directions so it's relative to the coordinates that it needs to be placed at uh, for that particular entity and the rotation of the entity. After which, at the bottom here, we're basically testing for the current health of the entity. If it's greater than the health stage two, which again is our 50% one. And then we're also testing if it's equal to or less than our 75% one. So between 50% and 75% health, then what we're going to do is we're going to basically take those coordinates that we basically set for the particles, and then we're going to basically spawn the particles in the direction of the velocity of 0 0.05 for the speed, and then we're going to sp spawn our particle one, which will push up the particles upwards. And then we're also going to test if the if this is not true, then what we're going to do is we're going to test if the current health of the entity is between 25% and 50%. And then if that's true, then we're going to spawn two different types of particles and they're going to spawn at the relative location where we set them to. And then again, the last one is uh, if it's a greater than 0% and less equal to or less than 25 percent and then it's going to spawn the most particles which is the um smoke normal flame and campfire smoke so it makes it look like it's really damaged then so that's basically all that's going on here uh, again you can get the procedure from the uh download and you'll be able to set that up uh, by basically just importing the um, procedure and then importing it into a procedure that you're going to use. So let's head over to the global procedures where we're actually controlling some of the other script. Mm -hmm. 
So if we go to global, and then we have a couple different things here. So we have the upgrade, uh, truck upgrade two script. We have the upgrade stage one script, and then the repair script, which we will cover right now. So this is uh, again, a little bit complicated. It's not too much um, to actually cover though. So what we have is we're testing for a condition if the current health of the entity is less than the maximum health and then what we're doing is we're testing if the player is sneaking this is important or you'll be basically driving the car and then what we're doing is we're also testing if the player has a particular item in the main hand now these two need to be source entities because we're going to be running it from the player right clicks on an entity so this needs to be source entity and then we're testing for the item to be iron ignits. And then what we're doing is we're going to test for the event slash target entity of one of the particular trucks that we want to repair. After which we're going to cancel the event. So this can be done through this procedure here because it's a global procedure, we can do that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to basically set our variables for the different health stages. And we're going to use that for testing. So in our case, what I'm doing is I'm dividing our the maximum health of the provided entity, this entity, which is our truck, by five. And then what I'm going to do is basically take that health of that number, and then I'm going to set uh, stage two, stage three, and stage four for our, basically, our percent for our health that we're going to repair the vehicle with. And then I'm going to multiply that by two, three and four, which will give us a good uh, range to basically test with. So after which I'm testing for the current health of the entity and if it's greater than zero and if the and between the current entity health is equal to or less than our total health, uh, which is zero point um, 20 percent, I think, because it's divided by five, right? So that's between 20% and 0%, so somewhere in this range. After which it's going to set the health to the stage two, which is the 40% va value. And then it's going to do the same for the other particular, um, particular um, testing. So we're, in this case, we're going to test for 25% and 40%, I believe, 20% <laughs> and 40%, and then we're going to set it to the 60%, and then it's going to test for 40% and 60%, and then it's going to set it to 80%, and then it's going to set test for 60% um, 60 and 80%, and then it will set it to the maximum health. Uh, after which, we're going to basically remove the item from the source entity which is the player and we're going to get the amount of items and minus that by one and then we're going to set the same item in the main hand and then after which we're just basically going to play a sound for the villager work slash tool smith and that will basically play the hammering sound that you heard in the, in the start of the video so that's basically all that's going on here it's just the repair script again if you want the script you can download it it will be in the files as well all right, so that leaves the other two procedures, which we'll cover right now. So we'll cover the first one right now, and then I'll make a little bit more sense what, what's going on. So first things first, we're testing if the, uh, we're running it on the global procedure side so it's player right clicks on entity and then what we're doing is we're basically getting the entity uh, of the target sla event slash target entity which is the truck and this is the first model the one the one that basically has no inventory and then what we're testing if the source entity is sneaking if that's true then we're going to test if the player's main hand item is a chest 
that's true, then we're going to cancel the, the event so we don't actually get into the inventory or open up the, or get into the truck or open up the inventory of the truck. Now this one doesn't actually have an inventory, so this shouldn't be necessary, but just to be on the safe side, uh, I've basically enabled it. The other thing that what I'm doing is I'm basically, I have some local variables here for the yaw, pitch, and position for the actual entity. And then what this is doing is it's basically setting the current entity location of the X, Y, Z, the yaw rotation, as well as the head rotation for the pitch. So that's basically set up that way. Then we're despawning the current entity and we're spawning the new entity, which is our truck chest one, which has the first inventory of the nine slots. And then we're basically just using those local variables that we basically set before we despawn the entity to basically set up the rotation and uh, location for that particular entity. Now that's pretty straightforward uh, compared to the next one, which we'll cover right now. So this one is just a little bit different, uh, basically the exact same procedure before in the other um, particular thing. The only difference is we're testing for if the truck has the nine slot inventory. So the one with the one chest at the back. And then we're also running this script right here. So this script basically allows us to drop the items from the slot. So what it's doing is it's for every, for each slot in the inventory of the provided entity. So the event slash target entity, get contents copy as item stack, um, enter or or something like that then what we're doing is we're basically going to spawn the gem and then we're going to spawn the particular item stack at the location of the entity so basically x y and z is our entity position and then i've basically just set the it being able to despawn as well as the pickup delay set to 10 which is the normal default settings and that's all that it does. It basically takes the items from every uh, slot and just drops it onto the floor. Now, because the entity does despawn, if this is not in that particular setting, then what it's going to do is basically delete all the items with the entity when it despawns. So that's important to run it before the item de or the entity despawns, and the new one will obviously spawn in after. But you can't actually set the inventory easily to the other one without a whole bunch of other scripts so it's just easier to drop it onto the floor all right so that basically brings me to the end of the video but uh, if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and if you want the download it will be in the description you can click on the link go to the github and it will be uh, right on the main page for the GitHub so you can download it directly from there and it will allow you to get all the procedures, the models and resources and stuff like that. So outside of that, thanks for watching. Peace out.